All right, so as we talked a moment ago, WordPress.org is what we're going to concern ourselves with because here's how we can make the full featured website. What I didn't mention also with WordPress.com is it doesn't give you some features. It doesn't give you the ability, for example, to add plugins. Plugins are like mini apps that add more features to your website. The basic WordPress.com website does not allow you to add plugins. And the whole concept of e-commerce is based on plugins adding extra features to WordPress because out of the box WordPress doesn't have any e-commerce features. That's another reason why you don't want a WordPress.com site. You're going to get the dot, you're going to get WordPress.com attached to it. It's going to be more expensive if you pay. It's not going to have plugins. It's going to have limitations. So training wheels, you don't need that. We need WordPress.org. And my instructions here, I hope you didn't go too far. I forgot to say, you don't have to start these instructions yet. <laughs> These instructions really are for you to do this at home. What we're going to learn to do is to set up our WordPress in a development environment and get up and running in WordPress. But some of this stuff is already ready, set up for us on these computers because it would take way too long, time and effort to set this up every time we come in. So some of these instructions are already done for us. I'll tell you which ones. But these are the instructions that you'll need to do at home on your own computer if you want to continue to do what we're doing in class. So looking at instruction number one. Number one is all about setting up WAMP server. WAMP, the W is for Windows. So if you've got a Windows computer, you set up WAMP server. If you've got a Mac computer, you set up MAMP. MAMP is in my folder of the Mac instructions. So it's slightly different for the Mac. But what this is saying, and this is already done for us, we don't have to do this. WAMP server is already downloaded, is already installed on these computers. On your own home computer, you don't have it. This is software that does not come with your computer. That's why I've got instructions here. Go to this website, download the software, install it. Basically, you use all the defaults of WAMP server, and now you've got the software. What WAMP server does is it creates a virtual server, a virtual hosting provider. Later on, when we go into detail talking about Bluehost, HostMonster, GoDaddy, one and one whatever, all of these companies that exist to give you a piece of the internet, we're creating a virtual one one that only exists on your computer, either here or at home. And what I have to say then is one of the big hassles of this class, and you'll get used to it, is that we need to do a few of these steps every time we come in. Because on the bottom right corner, you may or may not see it, but do you see a little polar bear staring at you? That's software called Deep Freeze. Our computers have software called Deep Freeze, which means uh, our computer's state is frozen. When you do anything to our computers and then you restart them, it goes back to our factory settings. So if we do all of these instructions and create a website and then restart the computer next time, it's every everything's gone. It goes back to our factory settings. So for you as a student, that's a hassle because all your work is going to disappear. This copy of the syllabus that you put on your desktop, it won't be here next time. It's not that I go in and I delete it, it's that uh, Deep Freeze resets to back, back to factory settings. So anything you save on our computers will, will go away when you restart the computer by default. That's why whenever I give you any PDFs or I give you any work, you want to take it with you on a flash drive. Whatever we're going to do today, if you didn't bring a USB flash drive, that's okay. Starting next time, definitely bring a USB drive if you want to take the work home with you. Because every time you turn off our computers, they reset. That's why I've got some things already <coughs> done for us. It would be a huge waste of time and resources to have us install WAMP server all together, 30 of us, and then next week install it again, and next week install it again. And so this is just one of the things we have to live with. We have Deep Freeze. Now what's good about Deep Freeze is, well, what if you accidentally get a virus on our computer? What if someone defaces the computer? What if someone installs extra software or uninstalls software? 
we just restart our computer back to how it was, back to our factory settings. So there's the good and the bad, especially with a public computer. So make a note. You don't have to do instruction number one, number one, right here. You don't have to download WAMP server. You don't have to do number two either. You don't have to set it up. It's already number one and number two are done in this lab. Other parts of the campus, I don't think so. I only teach here in 209. So number one and number two are done. We don't have to do it. But at home, on your Windows computer, you have to do this if you want to follow along with what we're doing here at home. And people often ask me, OK, what's the final project and such? This class has no final project. This class has no grades. This class has no certificate. This is completely more of a personal development course. So there's no homework, there's no quizzes, there's no assignments, there's no grades, there's no certificates. You get out of it what you, what you need. You get out of it a website and the experience of WordPress. So if you want to continue to do any of the things we learn here, I recommend you do it at home. You keep learning at home. Because if you're only relying on what we learn week after week in class, you know, you use it or you lose it. If you don't do it at home, you're going to forget how to do it next time when I'm not around, and then I can't help you. So I've got instructions for you. Since this is already done for us, what we do need to do, however, is turn on the WAMP server software. It's currently not running. On your desktop, you should see an icon, a purple W, a magenta W, that says WAMP server. Double click it. You will not get a huge pop-up that says, Welcome to WAMP Server. What you will get is, on the bottom right corner, a little red W appears, which will eventually <coughs> become green. Did everyone get a green W in the bottom right corner? Yes. OK. We might have to wait a moment, but it should eventually turn green. On the bottom right corner here, we've got WAMP Server running. We've got a virtual server running. We can create websites. We can create WordPress websites. When you see your little green W on the bottom right corner, click on it one time. You get this pop-up menu and select localhost. The first item in the menu. That should open up your web browser, doesn't matter which one, but it opens up a web browser and it should take you to this sort of welcome screen for WAMP server. Did everyone get the WAMP server screen to run? Does anyone need a little help? Okay. This just shows you've got a virtual server. You can make websites because a website exists on a web server. And as we'll talk about it later, that's the part that's not free. That's the part that we're going to pay $20 to $120 a year. It really ranges. But for learning these concepts, this is what we need. WAMP server. Or if you're on the Mac, you have MAMP. If you're on Linux, well, you know what you're doing. So here on WAMP server, <coughs> just a bunch of info. And you see here, your projects. No projects yet. No websites yet. <coughs> To create a new one, just create a directory or a folder in www. What this is saying is there's a folder in your computer called www, and any project you put into that folder will become a website. It's in my notes here somewhere, but let me show you what that means. Go to the desktop and open computer window. open computer up here on your desktop and this time we will go to the hard drives local disk C as in cat the main drive the C drive the hard drive whatever you want to call it the main hard drive of the computer of your computer double click local disk C and then near the bottom you're gonna see a folder called WAMP this WAMP software is installed on this computer, and it's found in this <coughs> folder. So you want to double-click WAMP. All of the stuff about WAMP server is here. 
but anything you put into this www folder will be a website. Double click that www folder. And you see something that says index.php. That's what we're looking at in this screen right here. This welcome screen is basically that index.php file. So this web page here is that file right there in the www folder. So what we, what we need to get used to is any websites that we want to run through WAMP server have to be inside of this folder. The www folder inside of the WAMP folder inside of the C drive. Is that installed? Exactly. The d this is all the defaults. You can change it during your setup process, but this is generated when you install WAMP software. <coughs> on the Mac, it's slightly different. Check the instructions because it's slightly different on the Mac. So basically, that's that's it for number. That's it for sheet one. We don't have to do anything in sheet one here. In sheet one at home, you download the software, install the software, run WAMP server, make sure you've got the green W, and that's it. Sometimes there's problems. I've got a little troubleshooting section that often works. Follow troubleshooting. It should work. I've tested it for on several computers for several semesters, several years, and it just should work. If you're trying to do this at your home computer and it doesn't work, bring your computer. We have the 30 minutes at the end of the day. If you've got a laptop, bring your computer and we'll try to figure it out at the end of the day. But this stuff should work. Any questions on sheet one? All right, sheet two. So if you didn't print it, you can still view it. <coughs> sheet number two. We've also already done this. Sheet two, instruction one, download WordPress, we've already done that the actual WordPress software. This is saying on your home computer, go to wordpress.org, press that big old download button, download it, and follow along. We've already done this. We've already got a copy of WordPress <coughs> ready to use. And what we need to do is put a copy of it into the www folder to actually use it. So let me show you on our computers what we've got here. I'm going to leave open this window of www. If you've closed it, you want to get back to it. But I'm leaving open the www folder, and I'm just putting it off to the side over here. I'm going to use it in a moment. And I'm going to open another computer window. So I've got a new, a new window here, and I'm leaving the www folder open there. I'm going to go back to the local disk C. Open up your C drive again, double click that. At the bottom, near WAMP, you've got WordPress. We've got already the WordPress software there. It's about 18 megabytes. It's ready for us to use. But as we saw earlier, any web project we want to run has to exist inside that www folder. So my instructions here are saying, Let's look at what my instructions saying and apply it to our computer because I may write great instructions, but if don't be alarmed if the instructions are not exactly for your computer. I can't predict what's going on on your computer. But what I've got here in these instructions, um, we've got the WordPress file. Put it on the desktop temporarily. On ours, it's in the C drive. The default installation folder for WAMP server is a C drive in the WAMP folder. Inside of computer, C drive, WAMP folder, we've got WW folder. Copy your WordPress folder, not the zip file, into the WW folder. Okay, so what we're saying here is, from this window, where I'm seeing the WordPress folder, right-click it and copy. So right-click the WordPress folder on the C drive and copy it. And then on my other window, remember I've still got that other window open, that www window. In that www window, right click, paste on the empty spot here. 
Question. Uh, which construction are you on here? So I'm going to do right click paste. So copy it from that other folder into this folder. Well, this is what we have to do every week. Every time we come to class. A variation of it. Oh, yeah. no, no. Question. Can you a couple of things? Did everyone manage to copy that WordPress folder into the WW folder? What this is giving us is a brand new basic copy of WordPress. It's, it's right out of the box. And uh, my instructions here are saying that we're copying this over. Now, as I said, this is a brand new basic copy of WordPress. As the course goes on, we're not going to start over every time. This is the process of starting over, copying the original WordPress file. What we're going to do at the end of the day, we're going to save a copy, take it with us, and when we come back, we will bring our copy back. We'll do that process together. I have it in the instructions. We'll get to that later. But here we're setting up WordPress. And the way WordPress works is it's very cool, powerful, advanced software because you need two things. One, are the, one is the actual WordPress folder with all of the files and graphics and everything. And the other is a database for everything to get saved to. A database basically is a location, like a file, where everything about your website is saved. How many users do you have? How many products do you have? What's the name of that product? What's the color of your background? Um, what's the price of a product or variations? All of those things. You have everything about your website is stored in a database. And so what we need to do, my instructions here, is we're going to create a database. We're going to link our WordPress to the database and then we're ready to go. So again, it's a little bit of a hassle for us. We have to do this when we're here, but then when we're set up in the first 10 minutes or so, it's not going to take this long usually. On the first less than 10 minutes, we're going to set ourselves up and then we're ready. We just have to do this hassle because we've got deep freeze. Our computers restart every time we're here. And it would be chaos to turn up deep freeze because people would download weird stuff, get us viruses, you would catch a virus, your files would disappear because someone else would delete it. So we have deep freeze. We have to do these steps every time, but I've got them written down. And we're going to do them together several times together until you have them ingrained, and then you'll do them and it'll make sense. So I've copied the WordPress file into the WordPress folder into the WW folder. Let's go back to your window where you had localhost. If you closed it, you can always get back to it let's say I accidentally closed it and I lost it you can always get back to this screen here by going to the address on your web browser http colon slash slash localhost it's in the notes here you can always go back to that WAMP server screen by going to that address notice it doesn't say localhost.com this is a local website. This is a website that exists only on your computer. No one else can access it. If it was uh, localhost.com or whatever, then it's an internet website out there in the world for anyone to access. But we're working in a development environment, a virtual server. 
So I'm going back to my local host. If you've already got it, got it open, you're there, but if you close it, you get back to it. You want to be in local host, so I'm going to use the shorthand over and over. Let's go to local host. And that should tell you that that means open your web browser and go to the local host address. Once we're here, click click the click this re click this reload button, this refresh button just to wake it up. Do you see anything different? WordPress. Your projects, WordPress. We've put a folder into the WW folder, and now this sees you've got a project in there. So don't do this, but watch this. What if in my WW folder I created a new folder called My Shop? When I go back to Word to localhost, I've got a new project, My Shop. I'm just showing you here that any folder you put into the WW folder. WAM will treat it will treat it like a web project. You can have multiple projects in that folder, and WAM server will see them as a project. So number two, set up a database for WordPress. We've got the WordPress software in the right folder, but we don't have a database for it yet. So this is saying go to this address, localhost slash php my admin. So up on the web bar, web browser bar, up on top here, type http colon slash slash localhost slash php my admin. One word, all lowercase, exactly as it is in my instructions right here. Instruction two, number two. When we start the day, we're going to need to do a variation of this every time. But after we're done with these couple of steps, then we're ready to get back to WordPress. So type that address, press Enter. If you typed it properly, it should then say PHP my admin and a bunch of icons and buttons and such. Basically, this is our database administration tool, and we're not going to use it very much at all. I know it looks scary, complicated, but we're all only going to need it at the beginning of the day. My instructions. Go to that address. At the top, click on Databases. Okay, let's click on Databases. You see a button at the top? Click Databases. You'll see a box, Create a Database, Database Name. In the Create Database box, add the name WordPress, click Create. That's what, my, that's what my instructions say. So in that box, we're creating a database. It can be called anything. We're keeping it simple. We're calling it WordPress. Lowercase, no spaces. If you put a capital letter here, later on, we need to make sure we also type the capital letter. So to keep it simple, keep it all lowercase, no spaces. <coughs> That's our database name. Create. We'll get a little yellow pop-up that says the database called WordPress was just created. Like that. That means it worked. You will also see in this list of databases that exist, you get a brand new one, WordPress. And on the left side, you also should see another indicator that you've got your WordPress database. Did everyone create your WordPress database? Don't worry that it's a Swedish, just uh, it's built in. So that was instruction two, step two. You created the database. Number three. Okay, now we need to connect the WordPress software with that database that we just created. Go to your web browser address, localhost, slash WordPress. So up on the address bar. I would recommend to type the HTTP stuff just because sometimes it gets confused because we've got localhost. So I would recommend you type HTTP colon slash slash then localhost slash WordPress. It should then take you to 
the welcome screen of WordPress to choose a language. Did everyone get that screen? One possible reason you didn't get this screen is you might have misspelled. You might have spelled it as localhost slash WordPress. That wouldn't work. Well, what if you called it WordPress and it still doesn't work? Well, what if in my folder here I called it my WordPress? I've got a project in my folder, WW folder, called my WordPress. And therefore, if I try to visit up here, localhost slash WordPress, not found. Do you see what, what I'm getting at? Whatever folder, project folder you call it in WW is what is how you're going to reference it in the web address. If it's my WordPress, then it works. We have a folder in the WW folder called WordPress, so therefore that address works. I'm saying that because as we move forward in the class, oftentimes we will be changing the name of our folder to be the date of the class. So if you try to access your class with last week's date, well, it's a new week. Of course it's not going to work. The folder name is different. So everyone got this uh, welcome screen here? WordPress is great because it's multilingual. You can set up WordPress to be in different languages so that then you can really manage it in your language. Question? That's a, that's a mistake. We want uh, the, the, the double slashes. I don't know if you have instructions, but we want HTTP. Okay. We want HTTP colon slash slash local host slash p and slash. All right, so here we've uh, got this screen. Go ahead and click Continue. I'm going to keep the default English. You can change it if you'd like. I'm going to keep English, Continue, and then again, these instructions are right here. It's going to ask us for a few things. What's the name of your database? We just created one. What's the database username? It's in my notes. What's the password for the database? It's in my notes. What's your host? Write down that whenever it asks you about host, it's always localhost. <coughs> in our case when we get over to putting it on GoDaddy or whatever it's gonna change but obviously I can't guess every answer for everything I can only tell you what we can work with in this lab so I'll click let's go at the bottom it's asking for the name of our database we just created a database called WordPress if we had created a database called my WordPress I would need to type my WordPress, obviously. If you created a database a moment ago called WordPress like that, you better type it like that. It is case sensitive. So if you called your database capital WordPress, you better type it here, capital WordPress. It's not that this new what database we want, it's just picking a random name, WordPress. So this will work for us. We created a database a moment ago called WordPress, that should work. Username and password is in my notes right here. This is step three, sub step, uh, no, step two, sub step A. Username is root, password is blank, it's nothing. So change this username to be root and this password deleted. There's no password there. And that's in my notes right there. Step two, sub step A. What? Question? Yes. Yeah. 
We've got a database, we've got a username, a password, database host, localhost. That's fine. We need localhost. Because that's what our address bar says at the top. We're on localhost. Table prefix, don't worry about that. You can have multiple websites in one database. This is how you keep them apart. Don't worry about it. Click Submit. At this point, it should say, all right, Sparky, you've made it ready to install. If at this point it fails, raise your hand, because you mistyped something. You're not quite there. Everyone got this screen here? Question? We'll just leave the table prefix as it is. Okay. So I'm going to click Run the Install. Here then what we're doing is we are setting up a site title, the title of our website. We're creating a website brand new. You can call this whatever you want but I'm making up this fictional company called Victor's Bakery. And here I can use capital letters and spaces and all of that stuff. And so this is going to be the title of my website. Not the web address. Again, this is not going to be a real website that I can see online. Yes? So you you could, or you can use my title here if you'd like. Okay. All right, so, yes, question. <laughs> All right, so right here, what we're doing is we are creating the WordPress website, and we're creating a login. This is what's going to be a little confusing, so you want to make a note. We had a login and a username of root a moment ago. That was only to access the database. We're not going to use that login very much, just when we set ourselves up. This one is the one where we're actually going to log in all the time to add a product, to check our sales, all of that. So this one can be anything you want, but my notes here have a suggestion. This is instruction two, number three. Um, G. Um, add a username. And I'm suggesting in 3G to add a username of admin, simply for us to get started. Admin, honestly, make a note, is not the best name to use. That's the number one name the hackers try to use to get into your site. So we're going to do it the wrong way, and I'll mention it every time. But you really want a better name here. I'm not saying choose your own name here, because you're going to forget. I have it written right here in the notes, so we can always get back to our site. But when you want to do this as a real site, you want a real username here that is not just admin. You can make up any password you want, but in my notes, I have here, add a new password. Password, the worst password to choose. But just for us to get started, we're going to add the password password. And if you notice, on my notes, I have that with a capital P. 
doesn't matter, but if you put a capital P, you need to type a capital P. I put it in my notes as a capital P. So I'm going to type password with a capital P. It's going to tell me very weak. That's okay. So I'm typing in a terrible username and a terrible password. But this is not going to be a real website at the moment. Only you will be able to access it on your computer. This email, if this were a real website, was going to be a way for you to retrieve your password. If you lost your password, you can go through the whole password retrieval. So here you can put in a real address or not, because it's not a real website. That would be the password where you get the notifications. New product sold. Um, product out of stock. New user registered. So this is the admin email. It can be real. At this point, it doesn't matter because it's not a real website yet. And then eventually, when we put this online, we want people to find us. We want people to do a, a Bing search, a Google search, a Yahoo search, whatever. We want them to find us. This is not a real site. It's not on the real internet. So I'm going to say, uh, don't let the search engines find it. It doesn't exist. It's not going to be out there in the real world. Later on, I'll remind us about this when we go to the real internet, because if I turn this off, the search engines might not find us. I might not get traffic. I'm turning it off on purpose here because I'll show you later where to turn it back on. You might want to turn it off as you're working on your site and turn it back on when your site is real. I'll show you that later. Click Install WordPress. Yes? Search engine visibility? As I just said, you can turn that off if you'd like or on. It doesn't matter at this point because we're dealing with a we're dealing with a testing site. I turned it off, as my notes say. <coughs> does it say? Uh, yeah, it does say. Okay, so I get a success. This says you've you've set up WordPress. You've installed it to your um, database. You've got a site ready to go. Let's click log in. There is a submit at the bottom after you type in your, your username and such. So click login. It's going to ask you to log in username and password. The username and password we just created a moment ago that's in my notes, which is admin and password is password. Obviously, if you chose a different username and a different password, type in your username and password. I don't know what it is. You typed it. But if you're following my instructions, it's admin and password. Yes? Oh, okay. So go ahead and log in at this screen, and that will get us into our WordPress dashboard. Okay, so here I'm logging in with my username and password, which is in my notes. I did admin and password with a capital P. So I'm going to log in. And I get this dashboard. So we're going to need to do a variation of this every time we come in. And right now, maybe you got it, and you'll be able to do it next time. 
Maybe you didn't. That's okay. We're going to do it together a few times, and then it'll be much faster the more you do it. We have to do that here because these computers have decrease. When you do it at home, you will not need to create a new database every time. You will not need to download WordPress every time. You will not need to set it up every time. You're just going to log in directly to your WordPress. Notice the address. It's in my notes right here, but look at this address. Localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. That's the direct link to log in back to your dashboard, back to your control panel in WordPress. So if I were to accidentally close my window and then I open it again, how do I get back to it? It's that address which is right there on sheet number two, instruction number four, B. It's right in my notes and it is basically localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. That address right there will take you back to your login screen. This dashboard So we should all have our dashboard here. And what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to take one more break. At this point, there were a lot of steps that we needed to do, and hopefully we got to this point where we've got a dashboard. We've got WordPress ready. If we don't, we have a moment to get caught up. It's 234. I'm going to turn the printer back on in case you want instruction one and two again to print out. We'll be back at 245, and then we'll proceed.